the Japanese word tycoon is used to describe a great lord or leader, then you can call Greg Harkins the tycoon of timber. You've got to be seen or you're not going to sell. To it. Greg has spent more than 40 years building furniture in his Yazoo County wood shop and likes to say that he sleeps in sawdust. The woodworking career began as a college apprenticeship and Harkins learned all he could about trees and carpentry, including the crafts and traditions that were passed down from German immigrants to his teacher Tommy Bell. There's unbelievable number of people that stopped by the shop for no other reason than the fact they could see me working in the, you know, working here. If you're going to work all day, you might as well be performing. You know, if you're if you're stacking lumber, you know, people are interested in what you're doing. If you're turning parts through the window of the shop, people are interested in what you're doing. More than just a carpenter, Greg is a connoisseur of wood, from bodock and cypress to pecan and pine. I mean, it's like a farmer, like a milk cow, milk cow type farmer, you know, and his cows, you know, he knows every one of his girls. His latest idea involves harvesting bark and bus. weaving it into wicker bags <laughs> for many of his chairs. Now see, he's been weaving on that one, and rolling on that one for a while, and I'm going to beat him, it looks like. Low-tech lumberjacking is a lengthy and risky process, and Harkins and two crewmen have to journey deep into the woods and search for that perfect tree. Try to pick a few of them, you know, and make, uh, you know, like some jam or jelly or something. This right here is a pignut hickory. Um, you know, you take it and, and cut it, and then take your prize bars and just kind of peel it off like skin off of a banana. This stuff is, is, is real, real heavy. First of all, and secondly, so there are no, to... there's no handles on it. There, there's and nothing. And it's slippery. And it's slippery. Ooh. How much you reckon that was? <laughs> Five hundred pounds. <laughs> How much you reckon we weigh? About 250. You know the the uh, that pole right there is literally worth maybe 15 cents, and the bark is worthless. I can take that same bark, uh, you know, process it and all like that, and use it for chair bottoms. Uh, make. Two hundred and fifty dollars, three hundred dollars out of that out of that one tree. And this place used to be full; it was covered up with hickory. I've got it to where now you can go out here hunting in, in the fall, and the little squirrels' ribs are showing. They ain't got no hickory trees to eat hickory nuts off of. You got to know who is behind you and who's in front of you, uh, because it's really easy to pull your hand in that saw. Every once in a while, you'll hear a piece that literally will dent that stuff. Every step of the way is dangerous. There's not there's not anything about this that's not, you know, that you can't step on a snake or um, something, you know. Uh, everything that you do about this is dangerous. Um, I mean, it's just life, you know, is all it is. Furniture isn't the only thing Harkins likes to build. He's either built or restored several buildings on his farm, including this Catholic church and these log cabins. It's all about an experience, you know, that uh, it's a little taste of, of the past in Mississippi. Even lunch at the Harkins farm is homemade, a pile of signature hot tamales christened with butter beans. They bite into it and then they go, ooh, mine's got a big butter bean in it. And they don't forget that butter bean. Those butter beans come from the Harkins garden that his many animal friends are clamoring to get into. <coughs> While the recession has slowed sales, Greg Harkins wants Mississippi to know that he's still open for business. Harkins has had several notable customers through the years, 
and his business has been featured in many national magazines. I've sold chairs in probably 50 different countries. And while anyone can go shopping online or at the mall for brand name furniture, the customers that value heritage and legacy and want quality made in the USA products come to Greg first. I mean, it is a, it is a bottom that will not come out of this chair. Tommy Bell used to say that, it would, uh, that a, a hickory bark bottom would outlast three chairs. You'd wear the chair out three times before you wore the bottom out. It's all part of Greg's deeply rooted belief in family, hard work, and the simple life. You know, I would hate for all of this uh, knowledge for ever, whatever it's worth uh, to be lost. Um, you know, I, I would love to pass it on to somebody else. I feel it to be important. You know, Tommy Bell gave me a gift that uh, there's no way to describe, uh, no, no monetary amount you could put on it as to what this is worth. For the Mississippi Business Journal, I'm Stephen McDill.